Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty.
more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm free. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free from depression. Yeah. I'm free from heartaches. I'm free from body aches. Yeah. I'm free from depression in my mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for freedom, God. Freedom to worship you. Freedom to lift your name. Freedom to exalt you. Freedom, Lord God. I'm free, God. I can worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Thank you, God, for the freedom that you provided to us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we're free, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, with me being free, I can surrender my all to you, Jesus. Withholding nothing, Lord God. I give my stuff away, Lord Jesus, so that you can use me for your glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. I surrender, I surrender.
Ana Bocia. Hallelujah. I surrender. I surrender. I come boldly, my humbly before your throne. I bow down to you, my Savior, my Jesus. I give you all the me. your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Bless you, Lord. We surrender all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We praise you, Jesus. If you're watching this right now, I just want you to worship the Lord again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord God. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's healing in your in your hands, Lord God. You have healing power, Lord God. We bless you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We glory in you, Lord. We glory in you, Lord Jesus. You're the joy of our salvation, Lord God. You're the strength of our life, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are our Ebenezer, our stone of help. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You're the Lamb of God, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We praise your blessed name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God is good this morning, or this afternoon, rather. Hallelujah. If you're watching, this, probably in the afternoon and everything, but God is good. And we're going to continue on my theme called The War, Part 3. The War, Part 3. And we're reading this from Ephesians chapter 6, verses, verses 10 through 12, then verse 18. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. Hallelujah. 
you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, as the Bible would say, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds, of strongholds. Because, you know, in, in, the, in the past few weeks, we've been talking about, you know, being strong in the Lord. Last week, we talked about prayer. We talked about the necessity of prayer, not just praying for yourself, but standing in the gap and interceding. Some of you may have watched that uh, live stream from Washington, D.C., called The Return, and how that was moving. I didn't catch the part of the last, maybe the last two hours of it and all and everything, but my, 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 what I call that was awesome. Because, see, we are at a crossroads in our nation. We are at a crossroads in our nation. And I really believe that we're at a time right now where God's people will come before him, repent of their sins. Now, some of you may say, I don't have no sins to repent of. Well, you need to have a repentant attitude because we all got things that we need to probably give to the Lord and help us to work out and everything. But the point of the matter is the church, if the church will get themselves together here in America and everything, we'll be more, let me put it like this, we'll be more be able to fight the enemy on the ground that we can choose and everything. But right now, the Bible says this, do not give ground to the devil. Do not give ground to the enemy. And a lot of times we wind up ceding ground to him. In a military campaign, in military battles, there's always there's a fight. And, uh, and sometimes that fight is all depending upon the territory that the, that the other side conquer. One side is holding territory. The other side is trying to take it over and all. And right now, I hate to say this, but the church is on the defensive right now. We're on the defensive, you know. We're trying, we're, at the same time, we're ceding ground. What I mean by ceding ground, we're giving up ground to the enemy. But I'm here to tell you that's not we're, what we're called to do. We're called to not only overcome the devil, we are called to take ground from the devil. Okay, that's what we're called to do. So in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, and then 18, it said, in conclusion, we're just from the Amplified Bible, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes, the wiles and the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. This is for our, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. With all prayer, verse 18, with all prayer and petition, pray specific requests at all times on every occasion and in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer. This is for all God's people. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, and we know this control. Though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, for the destruction of fortresses. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about today is basically the, the, the shield of faith. The shield of faith, okay? Faith is a weapon. Now, I hate to say this, but we most time we use, I think, I would say we abuse faith, but we use it for the wrong, well, I would say wrong thing. We don't use it as a weapon. We use it, boy, boy, Lord, I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a new car, okay? Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need uh, some more clothes. Lord, my children need clothes. And I believe by faith in Jesus' name and have those things. And nothing wrong with that, okay? We're supposed to go to God in faith and ask those things in which we desire or in special things in which we need and everything. But there's another side of faith that we don't exercise very often. That's called the shield of faith. Because, see, in Ephesians, you know, we read the Ephesians, continue on in, in the sixth chapter and everything. It's talking about taking up the shield of faith that you may what, withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. The enemy is always throwing fiery darts at you and I, okay? And the thing he aims at is our minds. That's the biggest thing he aims at. Because keep in mind, I always told you that our mind is really the soul or part of the soul, okay? And it's there where the devil put things in our minds and put things there. And if we don't cast them down, cast them down strongholds and everything, we'll wind up giving in to things before, before, it's, before it's all, all, all over with and all. Because see, because say we say, put on the protective shield of faith. This is verse 16 in Ephesians chapter 6. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So what the devil is trying to do, what he's doing, put like that, he's putting those fiery thoughts, those arrows in your mind. He puts them in your mind. He's always continually trying to put something in your mind. It could be a lustful thought. It could be a thought of deceit. 
It could be a thought of, uh, you know, looking at your brother and sister and, 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 and when slander them and everything. Cause everything starts with a thought. Everything. Everything starts with a thought. Because in other words, when you, when you wind up giving in to things, you, you, you wind up thinking about it. The devil will put that temptation in your mind to do certain things. But see, we're supposed to be on our guard to be able to fight against all the wiles and the schemes of the enemy. Because the devil is always scheming against us. When you're sleeping at night in your bed, you're sleeping and everything, the devil is scheming against you along with his demons. When you are going about your, your daily routine, whether you're at work or whatever, the devil is scheming to find to try to trip you up. And then if you're doing work for, the God and, for God and everything, he's really trying to trip you up because he sees you as a threat. And a lot of times we fail to realize that we are potential, I say potential threats to the enemy. Now, the reason why I say the word potential is because of the fact we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, first of all, we are soldiers of the Lord. We are in the army. But also, as a, in the army of God and everything, we also have authority. Now, what authority do we have? In Luke chapter 10, okay, the uh, 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 Bible talks about where Jesus said, yeah, I saw Satan fall as lightning and all. And he described, he said, look here, I've given you power. But that word power means authority. See, authority means that, or, or, or delegated authority. Authority means I have authority or power over you, okay? That's what it means. I have power over you. In other words, if I tell you to do something because I have authority over you, you should obey it. For an example, you know, the times we're living in now, you see a lot of lawlessness with this. If a police officer pulls you over, all right, let me, put it, let me back up a little. Let's say you're driving down the road. You are speeding. You are going 95, a mi 95 miles an hour in a 65 mile per hour zone and everything. So the blue lights come on which tells you you need to pull over and stop, all right? And most of us pull over and stop. Because why? Because that officer has authority, okay? So we, of course, we respect that authority. But also the consequence of that, if you don't pull over and stop, eventually it's going to catch up with you. He's going to charge you with, with more uh, uh, law-breaking and everything. Now, here's the bottom line. We have authority over all the powers of the devil, Okay, let me say it again. We have authority over all the powers of the devil, okay? Because, see, here's the thing we got to realize. Because, see, here's the thing. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, all right? Meaning that everything that Jesus has now, you, we, you and I have it, okay? Let me say it again. You are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Meaning our heir means that whatever he inherits, I will receive it. So if my father, which happened to be Roy Miles, passed away, me and my siblings and everything are going to inherit everything that he has. Because why? Because we're, we're heirs with him. We're his heirs, okay? All right, so we're heirs and joint heirs. Because so in other words, when God betrothed the, uh, Jesus, his son and everything, so therefore Jesus gave to us as joint co-heirs, uh, co okay? Meaning that everything that Jesus have and everything, we have also. So if Jesus have authority over the powers of all the powers of the devil, that means you and I got over all, all have all power over the devil and everything. Okay? And sometimes we fail to realize that. Because we because see everything that Jesus has, we have. And see, the Bible also says that we will rule and reign with him. Now, most time when you read that, you're thinking about, well, that's going to sometime in the, in the future. No. You rule and reign with him now. You rule and reign with him now. By how? In the spiritual realm. In other words, the devil is subjected to you and I. Okay? The enemy, Satan, Lucifer, or whatever name you want to call him, he is subjected to, to you to you and I. Why? Because we have authority over all his power. Because of who lives inside of us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So if, it's, uh, if the authority and power that lives in us is greater than everything else, that means that no matter what Satan throws at us, we have authority and power over those things, okay? Whether it be thoughts in our minds or if you're involved in work with the Lord and everything, that means also casting out evil spirits. That means, that's, uh, let me say, it, it means also casting out infirmities of the spirit and everything. What I mean by that, sometimes our sicknesses and everything are not necessarily caused by just cells by itself. Many times there's a spirit behind illnesses or whatever. There's a spirit behind that sometimes to be cast out. There are examples of that all in Scripture and everything. Where the, uh, there was one guy, 
in the Bible that Jesus, you know, went and, you know, took authority over the powers of the enemy. Most Bible scholars say this person had epilepsy and everything. But Jesus took authority over it and everything. He cursed it and took authority over it all. Okay? That means that sometimes there are certain things that we have in our bodies may not necessarily be because of, you know, cells or whatever, which it can be. But also it might be a spirit behind that and all. Saints, let me tell you something. We're living in a time now where spiritual warfare has really ratcheted up. Because right now I'm, I'm dealing on more on a personal level with dealing with, you know, how to deal with Satan and everything. But sometimes we expand our thinking. I know I had to start expanding my thinking. Expanding our thinking is more than just what I go through. It's more than just what, how the devil is attacking me. It also means how the devil is attacking in other areas, okay? Maybe he's attacking some of my family members or whatever, attacking them and subjecting them to evil thoughts, thoughts that can keep them in bondage and all. We just, the praise and worship, worship singer just got finished singing a song, talking about we're not in bondage no more. I'm free. I'm not in bondage no more. And boy, can we testify that. But do you realize that you have the power to set other people, men, other people free also? You have the power to set other people free. Why? Not because of your own power, but because of who lives inside of you. Okay? Because, see, here's the thing. But, see, you got to believe this thing. You got to believe this. Because, see, if you don't have faith to believe, it doesn't matter. Just like we, when we go to God in prayer and believe that we, can, we pray for God to move or whatever, okay, then we believe that. But we ought to, let, ought to realize that when we pray and believe that we take an authority over the powers of the enemy, we know that who we are in Jesus. We know who we are. So, therefore, when I speak to the devil and say, in Jesus' name, I command you to go, I say that in faith. I say that in believing that the devil is going to go. Because if you don't believe, it's not going to work. Because in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says this in Amplified. Now, faith is the assurance, confidence, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for or for, for, for divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, or the conviction of the reality. Now, let's think about that word title deed. Okay, what is a title deed? Now, those of us who own a house know what a title deed is. It's a legal deed or document constituting evidence of a right, especially to ownership of property. Let me read that again. It's a, uh, it's a legal deed or document con constituting evidence of a right, especially to ownership of property. Okay, so in other words, that because I have a title deed, I speak something in favor, and I have a title deed to it, meaning I have a right to it, okay? So in other words, if I have a right to it, that means I exercise that right, okay, to be able to do what I need to do. For an example, when a house is paid for, the bank or the mortgage company is going to give you the deed to the house. Okay, all right. It's sometimes called a title deed or a deed. They're gonna give you the deed to the house. That means you have what? Ownership. You have ownership. Okay. Let me just make something clear here. This book, or we call the Word of God, the Bible, is the title deed. All the promises of the Bible say are yes and amen. Okay, they are yes and amen. In other words, everything that God said and promised to do, He's gonna do it. That's the title deed. What we have to do is take ownership of it. Okay, how do we take ownership of it? When we take God's word and we, and we read it and we meditate upon it and we believe what God is saying and everything and we take it and back it up with prayer. Okay, you back it up with prayer. Believe that, Lord, you said you're going to do so and so and so. I stand in faith. You said I have authority over, over all the powers of the enemy. I receive that authority in Jesus' name. And you start exercising who you are in Christ. Remember, you are an heir and joint heir with Christ. You are an heir and joint heir. Wow. So if Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, that means, guess what? You're sitting there too. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you're sitting there too. Spiritually speaking, you're sitting. I know you're not sitting in heaven right now. Sitting, yeah, I'm not sitting in heaven right now. I'm sitting here in this pew or I'm sitting here in my chair. And everything. I understand that. <laughs> Spiritually speaking, you are sitting at the right hand of the Father. Why? Because you are heir and joint heir with Christ. So you got to start seeing yourself as who you are in Jesus. It's what it all starts back for. For an example, a military soldier, a soldier who's in the military. Well, I guess he has to be in the military to be a soldier, okay? <laughs> but let me put it like this. You're in the military, and you got to go through basic training, okay? And that training is more than just physical training. It's also an indoctrination of your mind and everything. So they put in you who you are. You are a soldier of the United States of America, okay? You are a soldier. You are sworn to protect all that the United States of America is for, especially the Constitution of the United States. You swear an oath 
You swear an oath and everything, okay? Meaning I am a soldier. I'm going to defend the Constitution of the United States. I'm going to defend the United States of America. And see, you believe that. So when it's time to go to war, you're not sitting up to go half, you're not half stepping. You know what you got to do, okay? There's a mentality that goes along with that. And many of us need to put on more of a militaristic mentality when it comes to dealing with the enemy. Because, again, you are in an army, whether you like it or not. You are in an army, okay? You are in the army of God. You are the, in the, the, you might say the army of the Lord of hosts and everything. You are part of that army and everything. And your job is to annihilate and destroy all the works of the devil. Because remember now, when Jesus came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, since the Jesus through the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, guess what? We can destroy the works of the devil. Okay? We can destroy the works of the devil. See, it all comes down to mindset. How do you see yourself? Now, if you see yourself as a weakling, oh, I'm just getting by. Y'all just pray my strength in the Lord. No, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? I can do all things through Christ who gives me what? Strength, okay? Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world, okay? Oh, here's a good one. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because the enemy is going to allow his attacks upon you. He's going to do everything he can to destroy you. Because when Jesus said this, he said, the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his job, to kill, steal, and destroy. But this is what Jesus said, look, but I come that you might have life, that you might have more abundantly, okay? And that abundant life comes in tapping into Jesus. We talked about a few weeks ago about having a strong relationship with the Lord. Because we read that scripture in Ephesians in, in, in the Amplified Bible. It's saying, because be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your what? Union with him. you got to have a union with the Lord and everything. If you don't have a right union with the Lord, you're going to be powerless. Let me say that again. If you don't have the right relationship or union with the Lord, you are powerless. You got to have a right relationship with the Lord. What do I mean by a right relationship? A right relationship means that I'm seeking God's face. I'm surrendering everything to the Lord. Lord, things in my life that I may not know what they are, right? But Lord, show them to me so I can give them back to you. And the things that you do reveal, Lord, I yield them to you. Now, come on. We all have that. None of us are perfect. None of us, you know, some of us, you know, we may not, well, I don't commit fornication. I don't, I don't do this. I don't do that. Well, glory to God. Praise God. But you're mean as a snake. <laughs> you can't get along with nobody. You're always gossiping and everything. But you think you're righteous and everything. You think you're so holy. Now, I'm not putting you down and everything. But holiness, though, is not just the outward appearance. Holiness comes from the heart. Okay? It comes from the inside. If the inside is clean, it's going to reflect on the outside. If you're holding grudges against people or whatever, yeah, you may not commit fornication. You may not commit adultery. You may not lie, steal, and cheat and everything. But on the inside, you got vengeance. On the inside, you get, you, you're vindictive and everything. You want to get people back or whatever. See, if God is trying to bring that to your attention. You need to get that right. Otherwise, if you don't, you're powerless. Because what you're doing when you're holding on to those things, you're giving ground to the devil. You're giving ground to the devil. Because, see, when we release these things and give them to God, and by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, he washes them away, then, then we draw nearer to the Lord, and through his spirit, he starts transforming us. He starts changing us and everything. And what happens is that ground, we're not giving ground to the devil no more. Because sometimes you can give ground to the devil just by the way you think. That's where it starts. Okay, as I said earlier, if you think you're not a soldier of the Lord, then you're not, then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fail miserably. Okay? You gotta you gotta look at this thing that I am warring. Oh Lord Jesus. I'm at war. That's what we just the whole thing. We are at war. See, when you became uh, see, let me say this. Satan is at war with everybody. He's at war with God. And because we are the creation of God, he's at war with us with us too. But then once you become a born-again believer in Jesus and everything, then he really is at war with you because he sees you as a potential threat. Now, what an army does when he sees someone as a potential threat, they're going to try to go ahead and attack them first to get the advantage and everything. And many of times the enemy is always scheming and trying to attack us and everything. But, see, we got to take it back, take, take that ground back, starting in our own minds and everything. Because the mind, as Joyce Meyer said, the mind is the battlefield. 
The mind is a, is a battlefield. Because, see, if you don't get the mind under control, which is part of the, which is the soul and everything, then the devil will have a, he'll have a victory over you every time. But when you put this mind, you put on the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. You put on the mind of Christ. How do you put on the mind of Christ? You get into his word. <coughs> You get into his word and everything, and you start meditating. Now, when I say meditate, you start pondering on it. Because I know some people, they're not knocking this. Oh, yeah, I, I'm on a Bible reading plan. I go through, I read three chapters a day. Great. Do you understand what you're reading? Okay. Are you pondering? How can this apply? How can I apply this? Okay. That's what meditation means. Or sometimes I call it research. Because, see, a lot of times, you know, when the Bible says study to show yourself approved or whatever, I I like to use the word research. Because, see, I'm researching the Bible. I'm researching what those words mean and everything. I'm researching how they can apply to my life and everything. And, see, when you start doing that combined with prayer and everything, then what happens is that there's going to be a transformation. There's going to be a transformation and everything in your mind. Because now as you start reading God's word, applying it through prayer, and surrendering to God those things that you know that not, should not be there, casting those strongholds down, because sometimes we have many strongholds in our minds and all. We have strongholds. We call them attitudes, but really they're strongholds. <laughs> you know, we have attitudes and everything. We come to church with a negative attitude. We come to our fellowship with a negative attitude and everything. And expect the preacher to get them out free. And if he didn't, if he, if, it, if the message didn't be on, on key or whatever, well, he wasn't anointed. You know, he should have helped me do something. No, it comes down to you. We, we who are preachers are just deliverers of messages and everything. God uses us. Uh, that's true. But at the same time, you have a responsibility to get some transformation in your mind and everything, see. Because, see, if there's no transformation, the enemy will still come in there and he'll still work his work. See, this is why you got to put up that shield of faith. See, that shield of faith will protect you. Because, see, as I said earlier, you, know, you see who you are in Jesus, okay. You see that you are heir and join heir with Christ. You see that you, you have all the powers and abilities that Christ has. You have it in you, okay. So when you start seeing yourself like that and everything, then what happens is now when the devil comes in like a roaring lion, you can stand up to him and say, no, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, okay. So I take authority of you because Jesus said I have authority over all, all your power, all your dominance. I have authority of you, meaning I got a power over you. So I take authority of you in the name of Jesus. And then what happens is that thought starts fading away. I know what I'm talking about because I put it into practice every day, <laughs> every day. That thought will leave and everything. But, see, it just don't start with thought. We'll get into this more later. But also it's more power because, see, see, God gave us power, okay? He gave us power to control upon all the powers of the enemy. In Luke 10, uh, in, in Luke 10, 19, he said, listen carefully, I've given you authority that you now possess, Amplified Version, to tread upon serpents and scorpions. He symbolized ther- serpents and scorpions as being the powers of the devil. And to exercise authority over all, not some, all the powers of the enemy. Meaning that we have exercise power over all the powers of Satan himself, of all his demon cohorts and everything. You have power. Okay? Let me say that again. You have power have power. If you are born again, believer in Jesus Christ, especially if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and everything, you have power. You got to see yourself as being powerful, not because of yourself, but because who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. When you start seeing yourself who you are in Christ, then you can walk from victory to victory. Or the Bible said from glory to glory, faith to faith, glory to glory, victory to victory. Because see, when you start seeing yourself who you are, See, I am, you, the, the I am that I am lives inside of you. Hallelujah. Okay? All right? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, Lord have mercy, lives inside of us. Okay? He lives inside of us. So, therefore, if the disciples can do what Jesus did, we can do those same things. Matter of fact, Jesus said, you would not only, not only do what I've done, you shall do what? Greater works. Greater works. So that means that if Jesus casted out demons, you can do a greater work in casting out more demons. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If people got saved under Jesus' ministry and everything, you can see more people get saved, okay, because of who you are. Well, Brother Tyler, that sounds kind of blasphemous. No, Jesus said it said it himself. You know, he said you would do greater things, greater things. Hallelujah. And the bottom line is you got to have a thirst. 
you got you got to have a thirst for the Lord and everything. You have a thirst, you know, because you got to have a, the Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So if you got a hunger and thirst after righteousness, meaning you have a hunger and thirst for Jesus and everything, and you want to seek His face, you want more of Him. You start spending more time in God's presence. You start spending more time in his word. You start spending more time in prayer and everything. Yeah, you know, sometimes it means turning the TV off. Yeah, it means kind of sometimes going you know, behind closed doors and spending time. But let me tell you something. When you start doing that, you become more like Jesus. And as you start becoming more like Jesus, not just in attitude, but also in his power. In his power. You got to see yourself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Okay. I am an heir and joint heir with Christ, okay? I have authority over all the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. And when you start saying that stuff, sometimes you got to, you know, we call it affirmation. You got to say that over and over again for you to believe it. Because when you start repeating something over and over again, you start believing that and everything. And see, God's word is true. So when you start repeating God's word, who you are in Christ and everything, oh, my goodness. So when the enemy comes in like a roaring lion, okay, you will be able to defeat him. Okay, you won't be scared. See, what the enemy tries to do is try to instill fear. He tries to instill fear in you. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, uh, you you don't know what. And maybe I don't, but I know this much. I trust in the Lord. I trust in the power that dwells in me, not my own power, but because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in me and everything. He continually renews my mind. Mm. Holly, this is good stuff. I mean, not because I'm saying it, this is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff, okay? Because, see, when you start seeing yourself and who you are in Christ, okay, then your faith starts building up. See, that's when that shield of faith starts going up and everything. Because, see, when you start seeing yourself, now, I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous. Now, keep in mind, you're not righteous because of your own power. You're righteous because God's righteousness dwells in you through his power. Okay, so I am the righteous. I am righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so you start saying those things in boldness, in boldness, and saying it boldly, and you declare those things upon yourself. And when you start declaring those things and everything, your faith starts building up. Because what you're doing, you're quoting God's word. And when you start quoting God's word, keep in mind, God's word is life by itself and everything. So you start quoting God's word, what happens, you start believing as you're reciting it to yourself. Hallelujah. Then no weapon formed against you. Hallelujah. Shall prosper. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, right now, I'm dealing with more on the personal things, the things that we deal with on a daily basis, where the enemy is coming in and trying to put plant thoughts in your mind. Now, keep in mind, when he plants a thought in your mind and it stays there, it becomes a stronghold, okay? And a stronghold sometimes is not going to be easily cast out, okay? A stronghold. It becomes a stronghold. It, it, it has become established. Okay, it's a mindset that has become established and everything. And a lot of times, you know, and we start reading God's word. See, God's word is like a mirror. When you, this is like, for example, many of us before we got here this morning, we looked in the mirror. We checked out our clothes, make sure everything was, you know, I, I look pretty nice. Okay, we looked in the mirror, make sure the hair is right. What little hair I got left, I you know, make sure the hair is right and everything, pat it down or whatever. Okay, make sure the beard is trimmed up and everything or whatever. I mean, some of you ladies, you know, you got in the mirror. Make sure that, you know, your dress is, you know, just right, fitting just right, not too tight, but not too loose at the same time, you know. Make sure, you know, you probably, I don't know, you, I don't know if you do this, you probably get in the mirror of your shoes. If you can do that, there you check your shoes out and everything. Make sure your toes are looking all right and everything. But anyway, <laughs> my point is, you checked yourself out in the mirror before you left, and you make sure everything was in order and all. Well, the Word of God is like a mirror, too. When you read it and everything, it's a reflection of things that you, need, you may need to correct or whatever. And so when you start reading God's Word, and you start reading, and, and you start putting it into your spirit, not just your mind, but your spirit and everything, you start putting it in your spirit, then it becomes life. Hmm. It becomes a living thing. It becomes alive through the power of the Spirit. This is why we put a lot of emphasis on prayer. Because, see, prayer in itself is, you know, I mean, prayer by itself is powerful. When you combine prayer with God's word and everything, then faith starts building up and all. When you start being, your shield of faith starts going up. So when the enemy starts firing those fiery darts at your mind, you start putting things in your mind, and whether it be a temptation to go sin. Well, it's all supposed to ask what it is, a temptation to go sin and everything. You put those thoughts in your mind, then you cast them down. You cast them down continually. And see, what happens is that builds you up. So you're exercising your spiritual muscle. You're exercising that shield. 
shield of faith. So as the Lord, as the enemy starts trying to uh, trying to attack you and everything, those fiery darts, those uh, those arrows, those flaming arrows of the enemy, he'll quench them. They'll be put out. Hallelujah. See, that's the power and authority that we have. Now, sometime in the near future, we're gonna be talking about how we exercise that power and authority dealing with other people. Because see, sometimes we fail to realize in this spiritual walk and everything. See, we are God's army. And so since we are God's army and everything, we have the authority to rein in the devil, not just in our own selves, but also with for other people also. And we, still, we talked about intercessory prayer last week. And we talked about how you combine this, what I'm just talking about today, you combine this with intercessory prayer. And you start taking authority over all the powers in it. For an example, many unsaved people, okay, as you know, we all need to come, they need to come to the Lord. Okay, now how do you say, but brother, I've been praying for this for a long time. Here's the key. You take authority over the influence of the enemy. Let me say that again. You take authority in Jesus' name over the influence of the devil. What that means. So, for example, the devil is influencing everybody. But keep in mind, Satan is the god of this world. Okay, so how do you take, you nullify it, but say, Lord, so and so, Lord I'm praying for uh, brother Bobby Joe, my, Bobby Joe, my brother, Lord God. And Lord, he's out there in the street. He's out there on drugs, Lord. But, Lord, I take authority of the, the, of the influence. I take authority of the influence of drug addiction. I take authority over the influence of lawlessness, and I bind it, and I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And you start praying prayers like that. See, that's, those are prayers of authority. Those are prayers of taking the power. I didn't mean to talk about this. I was going to wait till it, but I'm saying it now. Those are prayers of authority and everything. Now, you might not see nothing happen right away, but, see, God is going to war for you. Hallelujah. See, God's going to war in the spirit realm because we don't see when we pray, pray prayers like that, we don't see what's going on around. But I guarantee you this, you start praying prayers like that, see, that arrest. And the word arrest means to bound the devil up, that arrest him and everything. Now, keep in mind, a person still have a will to make a decision of his own. But what we're praying against is the influence of the enemy. See, this is where you go intercessory prayer. Well, Lord, just say so and so and so. Yeah, we all pray. I've done it too. And you still should pray that. But you take authority over, in Jesus' name, the influence of the devil. Okay, whatever it may be, you know, if you're not sure, just, just, take, authority, just, just take authority of the influence altogether. But if you know this person and everything, then you name the thing. That the Spirit can show it to you. Whether it be uh, drug addiction, it could be fornication, you know, it could be living with somebody, uh, it might be in a homosexual relationship, whatever it may be. You take authority over that influence. Because, see, the devil is doing the influence. The enemy, through his demonic spirit, is influencing their minds. Because, you see, right now, the enemy got them blind. Another thing, another thing to pray about. Lord, I bind, take authority over the blindness that the devil have over them. Okay. The devil have over them and everything. I take authority over it in Jesus' name. So when you start doing it, you start taking authority over the powers of the enemy. So when you do these things, I'm going to go into more detail about it in, in probably the next time I'm in, if the Lord's will. When you do these things, then you, have, then you realize who you are in Christ. Then you realize what God can do in everything. It's not just, saints, let me tell you something. It's not just about play, play. It's not about just going to church on Sundays. It's not just about doing things here and there and think we're all right and we just wait till we get to heaven. No, God has called us. God has called us. And see, and when you see the condition of this country and everything, you realize that it's going to take we, the saints, going to stand in the gap and intercede. Get ourselves together first, first of all, and then after that, so Lord, now we start praying and interceding. Because, see, we take this for granted. It's not about filling up the church pews. It's not, filling, it's, about, it's not about church membership, but it's about souls being saved. There's so much I want to say, but we've got to come to bring it to a conclusion here. But maybe somebody might be here right now who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You listen to this message. Now, you may say this is a message for the believers already. You don't know the Lord Jesus. Now, this is not about coming to church on Sunday. Lord have mercy. No, it's not. It's not about just doing, oh, we just want to, you know, come to church on Sunday. Then we just want to have a good time. No, it don't have nothing to do with that and everything. <laughs> what it has to do with is having a relationship with the Lord. See, let me tell you something. Sin will destroy you. It will destroy you. It will destroy you here now. Well, I'm having a good time. I'm in good health. Yeah, that's all right. But it will destroy you because eventually you're going to wind up going to a place you don't want to go to. Sin is, is, is terrible. Now, you say, well, I'm having a good time. No, sin is terrible because, see, the, you reap, when your Bible says you, you reap what you sow. So you're reaping unto those, those things. What's going to happen is you're going to create more bondage, more bondage. Yeah, you may be smoking that weed right now, having a wonderful time. But I guarantee you when you get older, you won't remember nothing. 
and it might do some other things or whatever. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, I come that you might have life, that you have it more abundantly. So here's the thing. The best thing we can do is tell you you just need to get come to the Lord. Make the Lord Jesus the Lord of your life. Because right now you're serving Satan. There's no middle ground. You're serving Satan. And as a result of serving Satan and everything, what happens is you wind up giving in to it, just doing the things he wants you to do. When you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, all those things don't mean nothing. They become empty. Yeah, I know you can't see it now because the devil got you blind. But I'm mean, here to tell you, smoking weed is nothing. Jesus can give you a high that's better than smoking weed any time of the day. He'll give you a better high than alcohol. Lord have mercy. He'll give you a better high than all the meth that you may be smoking or taking or whatever. He'll give you a better high than all the coke that you may be smoking and sniffing up your nose and all. He is, he is the ultimate high. I come, Jesus said, that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Now, you may say, how do I do that? Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you are saved. So here's what you do. You just pray this prayer. and Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you as a sinner, and I have sinned against you. Therefore, as I confess my sins, I give them to you. I surrender them to you. And now I make you the Lord of my life. Cleanse me. Purify me in Jesus' name. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I also believe you were raised from the dead. And therefore, I'm alive. Therefore, I am saved. And I believe that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, you were saved. You were saved from what? Saved from sin. You have been saved. You have made Jesus the Lord of your life. Now, what you need to do is find a church. And I know some of us are still closed down, but find a church that ministers God's word. Okay? Get into the Bible. Start in the book of John. Start in uh, 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 Romans and all. Start there. Read that. Meditate upon that. Then pray. Start seeking God. Lord, I need more of you. I want, I want more of you, Lord. Just give me more of you. Ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he will give you these things. Now, if you want more questions, whether you contact us through our Facebook page, through Messenger, and we'll be glad to minister to you that was there. Now, there may be some of you right now, you maybe need healing in your body right now. You need healing. You're watching this recording right now, and you need healing. God is still, his anointing is still being a recording right now. If you just believe that Jesus is a healer, believe by faith, I don't care what, it may be diabetes, it may be tuberculosis, it may be cancer. Maybe you're going through depression or whatever. God is a healer. So I'm here to tell you that by his stripes you are healed. He sent this word and he healed them and everything. So we ask, Lord, would you pray that we pray for healing of whatever their abnormality may be, whatever their disease may be, Lord God. We pray healing now in the name of Jesus by the power of your might, Lord God. So, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. We stand and we take authority over all the powers of the enemy that you are healed now. Now, be healed. Believe it in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, and we praise you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Let's just take some time to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden.